boy, we are going to piss some people off today, and I am excited. I cannot wait to see the comments on this one. This should be interesting. Now, if you guys did not catch it from the thumbnail, we are talking about the sniping technology implant today. One of the ones that I was probably the most disappointed for, and admittedly maybe a little bit jaded when I saw what actually came out with it, and so I wanted to give it a fair shake and go through kind of the full soup to nuts review of this implant. Maybe my opinion changed a little bit, but spoiler, probably not a ton. So let's talk about why I'm not a huge fan of this and ultimately why I think there are better implants out there if you are a Canon user, i.e. Barrage. Anyway, let's undock and dive into it. Let's talk about the basic functionality of this implant first and foremost. Now this implant is a skill that you do activate. It does charge up over time, so there's nothing that you can do to speed it up other than upgrade the implant itself. Now there are 20 levels within this implant uh, that you, I shouldn't say within the implant, there are 20 levels of sniping technology, that bar on the right side of your health, that will charge up according to how high your implant is leveled. When you're at level one, you're at basically five and a half seconds, and then it goes down to four seconds, three seconds, two seconds, one second, ultimately, if you get it all the way up to 45. Now, this does mean that at level one, you are not able to get to the full 100% of that charge up. Um, that's not a huge issue, in my opinion, because uh, it's a tracking bonus anyways. And again, if you're using this as a sniper, it's probably not that that impactful. If you're using this with auto cannons, maybe it's a little bit more, but you go basically from, I think, a two to a four if you're fully charged up. Now, even at level 10, you can't get fully charged up on this. You do get to 90, uh, 95%, but you're not going to hit that full 100%. You are able to get that when you go to level 10, uh, I'm sorry, to level 15, but until then, you're not able to actually get that full bonus. Again, not the end of the world. I don't think that most people are going to use this below level 10 just because, again, the tracking bonus is fine, but if you're using it as a sniper, it doesn't really do a whole lot for you. Now, the other interesting thing here, and something that actually does give you a little bit of tactical flexibility, is that you are able to warp with this implant active, and it will continue to charge up as you go. It means you can warp to a gate, land on grid right as you are fully charged up and then fire a shot and then immediately warp off. This gives you a little bit more uh, capability so that you are able to uh, move and shoot a little bit easier. One thing I do want to call out here that was kind of interesting in my testing is that you only get one shot no matter how quickly you charge up. So even if you were charging up in, again, one second, so you hit it in 20 seconds, you in theory should be able to get four shots I was only able, able to get one. It did not recharge after that first round. I don't know if that's intended functionality or if that's just a bug, but in my testing, again, that was a huge issue for me. It decreases the value of this implant a ton, in my opinion. Now, when we get to level 15, we do have two options here. One is to basically give you a damage bonus for each level that you are charging up. And then you can also get a optimal range and fall off bonus here as well. Now it's important to note that regardless of what level your implant is, this is tied to the level of the charge up of sniping technology. So you can only go to level 20. It doesn't matter if you are a level 15 or a level 30 implant, you still can only get 20 levels of sniping technology charge. So the max that you can get while substantial is capped basically right out of the gate. The damage bonus is fantastic. I think it's really great. You can actually one shot a cruiser. I put a Celestis out here. I did have an armor plate on it. I think without that armor plate, it would have gone pop, but the damage bonus is great. It is still tied to your normal cannon range. Now, as far as the range bonuses, again, you get some great benefits here. You get 20 levels at 7.5% per level. You can get these cannons striking out to almost 500 kilometers, actually a little bit over 500 kilometers with the first fall off. So it really can be a phenomenal reach out and hit something. However, if you can't kill it in one shot, it's kind of pointless, right? You have to have another ship there to tackle something, to hit it, to do whatever. At that point, again, I feel like you're better off with the damage at, over the range because if you can't kill it the first time, it can warp off, it can do whatever. Like it again it, it's just it's a little bit odd the way that this is structured now as we keep going up again we do reduce the time that you are able to have 
uh, for each level, so you're able to get that quicker. So with that being said, again, if you're going to level 30, the two options that you have here, the first one is going to be to reduce the time per level by 25%. At this point, you are only at about two and a half seconds per level. So reducing it 25%, you're basically reducing it to just under two seconds. Again, that's great. I know that if, if you could get multiple shots, that would change the game a little bit. But as it is, it to me doesn't make a whole lot of sense. If you are going to go to level 30, though, I think the clear winner here is going to be the reduced by 50% the penalty or the, the, the clearing out, I guess, of the sniping technology. When I did this, I was able to get multiple shots. So at level 30, I actually did get a shot at 100. I got a shot at 50%, 25%, 15%. When I went all the way up to uh, level 45, I also got an additional shot at 10% uh, and I think 5%. So it was able to extend that benefit out and actually boosted my damage a good bit from that perspective. Again, I don't know that I would go to level 30 just for that in particular because of the cost you're, you're talking about. Again, you know, I think close to a hundred billion isk to get there. But if you're going to do that, I think the clear option is going to be to do the 50%, assuming that the mechanics work the way that they do right now. If the devs patch this or changes it, it may change a little bit, but overall, I think that benefit of getting those multiple shots with even a incremental damage boost, not 100%, but an incremental damage boost is absolutely the game uh, or the winner here in this comparison. Now at level 45, you do get the evasive maneuvers. Basically, this gives you a 200 billion ice stab enjoy i i mean i don't really know what to say about this one it's it's a pretty underwhelming ability in my opinion again you would be able to basically land on grid pop a shot off hit this and have an ice stab to be able to warp out again for 200 billion again i i just i don't see this being terribly effective but to each its own so that's really my my big take and again i know that a lot of people are liking this right now it's fun to be sitting out at 100 kilometers or uh i shouldn't even say that like 400 kilometers and popping frigs and one shotting frigs um that's that's kind of the only thing that i really see in this one which is unfortunate but maybe i'm wrong you know i was testing this uh, again with the tornado 2 um, I could very easily see if you are in a sniper fleet or something like that, um, if you're able to have a daredevil fly around, maybe pull a Lodgy out of the uh, the bubble, and then people are able to target it with that charged up damage. You could basically two-shot a, a Lodgy cane. I had this one fitted with two hardeners and uh, a extender rig or shield extender rig. And again, you were able to basically wipe out most of the shield on it, so you could probably two-shot it if you really wanted to. Beyond that, though, you really have to have multiple ships if you're going to be especially sitting out at, you know, 400 kilometers. That is in and of itself an expensive proposition. I could see this having some use with the dreads. Again, I'd probably want to be using the damage uh, option anyways. Um, so, again, I, I think that's probably where you would want to go if you were going to be using this. But it just feels like a really expensive implant. I think there are better options for the money. Now, in terms of general units here, there are two clear and obvious choices. The first is going to be the damage output boost for the gyro stabilizer, basically give you extra uh, damage with those cannons. Again, if you're only going to be getting one shot, we wanna pump up that damage on that one shot as much as possible. The other one is going to be the tracking computer uh, boost. Again, you're going hot with all of these anyways, so if you're able to put one of these on, it gives you that uh, range, optimal range and fall off bonus. Uh, obviously, we're not as concerned with tracking at several hundred kilometers, but that would be something again that, uh, that I would want to see if I was having that general unit. Uh, in terms of the other ones that I would use, I'd probably look at the uh, micro warp drive output if I'm trying to fly a tornado or something like that. It does increase the capacitor cost a good bit. So if you are using a, um, uh, an, a large MWD, you're probably going to want to be doing uh, either a dynamic fuel valve or fitting some batteries or something like that. So again, I don't know that this would be my first choice, but it could be a really good one. And then the other is going to be uh, actually either one of the inertial stabilizer GUs. Um, they're both really good. Again, if you are looking to overprop something, you're having a lot of mass on there, or if you're using a battleship, I think that if you're trying to be a little bit more agile, again, you fly in, 
you pop something and then you warp back out. I think that's going to be a good option for you. Um, and especially again, if you don't want to get to level 45 and have to do that one, uh, this particular one is going to be really good. But what do you guys think? I'm going to be curious to hear how wrong I am in the comments. I feel like a lot of people really like this one. I just don't see it. I, I don't really, I don't know. I just, to me, again, it feels like a meme ship. It's fun to get those kill mails. It's fun to pop stuff at that, those extreme insane ranges. But I just think that, again, I'd rather have the repeated um, boost of the barrage implant or something like that. Um, that's just me though. So either way, um, I hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend or week. And until next time, remember, kill much lasts forever and fly safe. Have a good one, y'all.